Welcome back. In the days following 9-11, there was one story that offered a ray of hope in an otherwise dark time. It's a story of the small Canadian town of Gander, Newfoundland, population 10,000, and how they provided refuge for the nearly 7,000 passengers diverted there after their flights from Europe were not allowed to enter U.S. airspace. It's a subject I know well. After 9-11, I spent six weeks in Gander researching how Gander and the surrounding towns cared for the plain people, as the unexpected guests were called. My book, The Day the World Came to Town, recounted the bonds that were formed. The story also turned into a hit Broadway musical called Come From Away. Twenty years after first meeting him, I spoke to Oz Fudge, who was the town constable in Gander on 9-11. Here we are coming up on 20 years. What do you think? It, it, it seems like it was yesterday, and then it seems like it was a lifetime ago. So it's just so, uh, I don't know, it's hard work putting into words exactly how I feel. What's your strongest memory from those days? I think for me, it was just to watch the way things were happening. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can consider it a privilege or I was lucky or whatever, but it being in the police vehicle and having to go around to wherever their passengers were, and I got to watch the reaction. I got to watch the reaction when the passengers first arrived uh, a couple of days into it and when they were leaving. And you could see how, how things were changing and how moods were changing as the days went on. And that was uh, amazing to watch. Now, you and I have talked about this often. You don't really see what the folks in Gander did as being anything extraordinary. Uh, but so many people do. Why do you think that is? No, that's, that's uh, <laughs> the, what is it? They used to call it $84,000 question. I, I don't know. Because as you know, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, we're, we're very proud people, no doubt about that, uh, and humble. And what we did during that week was to us, it was done. It had to be done. So let's get her done. And that was it. Once everybody went back and we kind of uh, gained perspective on it, we said, oh, well, geez, that was good. And off we went. We never thought no more of it until, you know, uh, the attention was brought once, uh, like the, the day the world came to town, the book, as well as now the play, Come From Away. If you look at the world today and you look at what's happening and you see on the TV and you see on your Facebook and everything how people are getting angry at each other, and they're fighting on airplanes and they're fighting on trains and they're fighting in grocery stores. And now people are looking at this play and reading the books and seeing the, the documentaries and going, I remember, I remember. That's what it was like when I was growing up. And they're longing for that. The, uh, you talk about how Newfoundlanders are, uh, are uh, uh, proud people. There are different sort of people too. For those who have never, uh, met someone from Newfoundland, uh, give, give people a sense of what a Newfoundlander is like. I mean, we like to laugh. Uh, we can't take too many things too serious. Life is too short. And so uh, we, we like to laugh. We like to, to uh, you know, uh, family is very important to us. Friends are very important to us. Strangers are very important to us. And I think that's the difference. I think that's, that's basically who we are. Why are strangers important? Well, I mean, when you look at an island like us and you think about when people come in, this is a new face, new, this is almost like a new family member when they come in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and, and that's the way in which we, we treat it. You know, we, you got to remember, uh, like 60, 70 years ago, uh, well, 1966 is when we had our highway that went from one end of the province to the other. We were finally connected up. A lot of it was done by boat. So you never got to see strangers coming into your community uh, like we do today. So I think we still have that, that sense of excitement when someone does come to visit. The, uh, the idea too you've talked about with me before is the idea of, of just, you know, putting your arm around someone, you know, in, a, in troubling times. Talk a little bit about that. When it comes to tragedy, when it comes to something happening in your life, you will find someone uh, that will come up to you and put their arms around you and give you that hug. 
and whisper in your ear, you know, we're there for you. Don't worry. And that's really what you did on 9-11 as well. If you got to see what I saw, you've seen that. You've seen people coming up to passengers, locals, and giving them that hug and telling them, you know, you got nothing to worry about. You're here in Newfoundland, Labrador now. You got nothing to worry about. Don't you worry about a thing. We got you. And that's what it was. There's an expression that I learned, which was, which I, I, I've, I use all the time and, uh, now, and I attribute to, to my time in Newfoundland, was you can always add a little bit more water to the soup. The yes. idea being that if, you know, even if you don't have a lot to feed your family, if your neighbor doesn't have any food, you can always add a little bit more water to the soup and maybe a little thinner, but at least everyone will eat. Everyone will eat. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And, and you find it right through this province and into Labrador. You'll find it. And that's the way in which we look at. You know, uh, if, if I got something and you got nothing, I'll share what I got. It may not be much, but we'll share. We're going to go through this together. Another story involved Roxanne and Clark Loper, who were flying home to Texas after adopting Alexandra, a two-year-old girl from Kazakhstan. While in Gander, the young family stayed in the home of Bruce and Susan McLeod. Oh my God, hi! Hi! <laughs> it's been 20 years since Roxanne Loper saw Bruce and Susan McLeod. I have to go. <laughs> I see. <laughs> When you look back on your time, you know, there in Newfoundland, what comes to mind now 20 years later? <laughs> good things, all good things. Um, uh, I, I miss the people and uh, I, I really don't know. It's, it's, that's hard to answer. Well, let me ask it this way. How, you know, when you, when you think about what they did, why was that? Why was that special for you? What, what, they, what they were able to do to help you, your family, and so many other people. Tell me why you, why you appreciate that. Well, because it was terrifying, and we were all scared, and, um, and we didn't know what was going on, and they were calm and reassuring, and they brought, they brought peace to a time that was just crazy. Do you remember what it was like the first time you met Bruce? Yeah. What was Bruce, like you answer. Yeah. What was it like <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning when we got there? Right, and we had been on the plane for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the tarmac. That's not counting the over the ocean part. <laughs> oh, yeah. And with a baby. And with an infant. And with a, a two-year-old, yes. That was very, very, uh, that needed a diaper. Bruce, what do you remember about uh, about Roxanne and uh, and her family when you first saw them? We needed somebody to stay overnight at the Lions Club uh, because we had 130 people that of all different nationalities and whatnot. What we didn't know what could ha what could happen because everybody was in a very high state of uh, of anxiety, flight. and I was in the kitchen about three, two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, just rumbling around. And Roxanne came in and she was right. upset. And we started talking there, but uh, there isn't a lot of privacy in between. And we had a hundred people right outside us trying to sleep. So we went out, sat in the front steps until about seven o'clock in the morning and talked. <laughs> and then I went home to get a little sleep. I guess we, we just sat there and, and talked and got to know each other pretty good. What was special about uh, Bruce and Susan and how they extended themselves for you? They were family immediately. Bless him. He, we, sat on that, we sat on those steps and talked. I remember that. And uh, yeah, he didn't know what he was getting into with me. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you my life history. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I vented and you listened. Yeah. Well, there had to be so much uncertainty with everything that was going on by then. By, by then, Roxanne, I'm sure you had, you had seen on TV what had happened in New York, mm -hmm. you know, and just living with those and just seeing those, those images and trying to process that. And you're, you're bringing home a two-year-old into, into, that, into that world. 
Right. They didn't know English and had never even been in a car before this. So yeah, it was chaos. And I did need to vet and bless him. Bruce was there. <laughs> well, is that, in a way, that's sort of what Gander provided, right? They, get, they provided oh, yeah. folks that space to be able to, to try to process everything that was, was going on. Welcome to East Coast Canada. It uh, is just the way it is that we, we had mm -hmm. people come in that needed help. And uh, with, with the Lions Club, our motto is we serve. Whether you're in, uh, the people landed in Halifax or Gander or St. John's, uh, they were all greeted in the, in the same fashion. The big mm -hmm. thing with Gander was that Halifax, you got half a million people and you put 10,000 extra in, you don't notice it. Uh, and St. John's, very similar. But you put 7,000 passengers in a town of 10,000, you tend to notice that. <laughs> so <laughs> it, uh, it, it uh, sort of resonated with us, and uh, we did what we had to do. We People in need, and uh, we were the ones to provide it. We literally landed in your lap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still I still have the phone bill from that night because it all went on my cell phone. Oh but my goodness! But as Alex has grown up, she's now what? Almost twenty-two, almost right? Twenty-two. Mm -hmm. She's twenty-two. Yeah. You know yeah. how much? You know I spoke to her. She she gets it. She understands. She she followed this. But how important was it for you as she was growing up to tell her about this story? During a time of, of terrible uncertainty and scariness we were embraced by this this whole town and and it made it so much more tolerable and easy uh and it, and it makes me want to continue that and i've i've tried to instill in all of my kids to to uh continue with that kindness you know anytime they see anyone that needs any help uh, we don't know their story we don't know what they're going through we just know they need help so help them bruce pick up on that though what do you think well, to give you an idea, Jim, uh, when we, we loaded the, the, the folks back on, on the buses to go back to the plane, we, we cleaned up the, the Lions Club and put everything away. And uh, we sat around and had a beer. And uh, to, a, to a person in there, uh, we all said, we think we got more out of it as far as good feelings and whatnot than the passengers did because we felt so good being able to do it. 